Hi and welcome to my video and today I'm going to be reviewing Disney Plus's Marvel The Falcon and The Winter Soldier and it's taken me a while to make this review because I did like the show but I don't know how much I love it. Anyway, this review will contain spoilers, there's your spoiler warning and on with the video, these are my thoughts on the show. The show is set about six months after the blip and we see the aftermath of it and how the world has changed since. We see more like everyday behind the scenes stuff of Sam and Bucky. So we see Sam struggling to get loans and we see Bucky in therapy. It's also the story of how Sam chooses whether or not to become Captain America. Spoiler alert, he does. And in the making of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, someone put it most beautifully that this is Sam's story of his future and Bucky's story of his past, which is pretty accurate. We start in episode one where Sam decides to give up the shield as like an endgame, it feels like it's somebody else's and he believes that the shield's going to be memorialized as like a token to Captain America and during his speech he says that the world needs new heroes and the episode ends with a new Captain America who we later find out is John Walker a US soldier who has a bunch of ordinary medals really good at fighting he seems like a perfect fit for Captain America right wrong he goes a little crazy a little psycho when his friend Lamar is killed by the flag smashers flag smashers are the big threat of the series and I put them in air quotes because they don't really seem like this massive threat their ringleader is Carly Morgenthau a teenager who preferred the world during the blip once people snapped back and those who sailed in those homes got kicked out put into refugee camps that were underfunded overcrowded without resources and so she didn't like that and I did these flag smashers and so the flag smashers did some radical things like stealing supplies from the GRC blowing up a supply place infiltrating government and kidnapping some senators all to make a statement that they did not like what the GRC were doing, trying to force borders between countries. And like good little boys, Sam and Bucky need to put an end to it, but there's a catch. Carly and some of the Flag Smashers weren't ordinary people, they were super soldier serum enhanced people because some guy ended up recreating the serum. Bucky Brain, the incredibly smart guy that he is, thought, hmm, who's the leading expert on super enhanced humans? and broke Zemo out of prison and honestly Daniel Brühl is hilarious the most iconic scene is obviously Zemo dancing so yeah Bucky helped break out the guy who could have got him killed and tried to split up the Avengers I say tried though he did succeed for a while however Zemo did seem trustworthy he helped locate Carly though he shot her without hesitation and killed the rest of the super serum so she couldn't create more soldiers all but one serum, but I'll get onto that later. Given Zemo's history with Wakanda, guess who shows up at the end of episode 3? The Dora Milaje, more specifically Io, which leads to an epic fight scene in episode 4. In my opinion, one of the best fight scenes in the MCU. All of those women kicked the guy's asses, which led to John Walker saying they weren't even super soldiers. John Walker finds the serum that Zemo failed to destroy, and getting destroyed by the door pretty much made up his mind to take the serum. And previously, his friend Lamar says that the serum just amplifies what's already in you. So good becomes great, and bad becomes worse. So when Lamar is accidentally killed, John goes into full psycho mode, a man far beyond reason, and kills the flag smasher who thinks killed his friend. And it is very brutal. This is the first time the shield is covered in blood, and I did not see a content warning for this episode. The next episode starts an epic battle between Sam and Bucky and Walker and you don't really know who's gonna win. Walker snaps Sam's wings, Sam and Bucky snap Walker's arm trying to pry the shield off him. Wow, I just saw that parallel. But eventually Sam does get the shield back and after a good little scrub it's squeaky clean but it's not that simple. He still doesn't know if he wants to be the new Captain America. And here we meet Isaiah Bradley again and we're finally told his story. After the success of Steve Rogers with the serum they want to create more super soldiers and it only works on Isaiah and they want to find out why so they experiment on him why it only works on him and the world never knew about this. The world never knew that there were more super soldiers. More specifically, they didn't know that there was a black super soldier. This makes Sam questions whether as a black man he wants to be the new Captain America. He knows taking up the shield he'll get a lot of judgement, but he decides to anyway, which leads to a great training montage, a new suit reveal, and an epic but casual I'm Captain America for the first time. I'm sorry, wait. Who are you? Captain America. And as all Marvel things end, there is action and fighting and the threat of Carly and the Flag Smash has come to an end through a mobile app and a gunshot. Or shall I say three gunshots? I mean, damn, Sharon, one will suffice, but in all fairness, Carly shot her first. Oh yeah, I haven't mentioned Sharon Carter yet. So, Sharon Carter shows up in the MCU again. She kind of got left behind in Civil War and she was great in the beginning of this show. She had an awesome fighting scene but then disappeared and you only saw her in a few shady phone calls here and there. All that led to the very surprising reveal that she is the power broker. I mean, so surprising that you kind of knew it or suspected it from the beginning and the reveal only left me to ask the question, why? But it, you did this for what? Why not? <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> why though? So that's pretty much an overview of the show. Now let's get into more details of what did and didn't work for me with the show. Let's start off with Sam's character, the Falcon, the first half of the title. And honestly, I loved his character in this show. I loved his storyline and his story arc. We meet his sister Sarah and his nephews and we see how the blip affected him personally. We see him struggling to get loans to fix his parents' boat. I mean, 
The glitz and the glam of being an Avenger doesn't come with a paycheck, just a title change. This show is Sam accepting to be Captain America, and this may be a little controversial, but this show really made me like Sam as Captain America, maybe even more than Steve. Maybe. Sam was the only one that could reason with Carly. John was a little too hot-headed. Sam was the only one that Isaiah could tell his story to and get a little justice for him. Honestly, the statue of him made me a little emotional. And of course, Sam's speech had me stunned. I liked everything he was saying. I understood where he was coming from, but I do also kind of agree with the senators. I mean, half the world disappeared and reappeared five years later. A lot's gonna have changed and now a lot's got to change. It's hard. Give them time. But I really did like the last line where it was something like, you've got the power. How are you going to use it? We can already see Sam settling into the role as Captain America. He knows what he needs to do. And honestly, Sam's story was the strongest part of the show. Now let's talk about Bucky, the Winter Soldier, the second half of the title. And I really liked how they played his character in this show. We see him no longer running from the Winter Soldier part of him, but running towards it instead. The scene in Wakanda where Bucky is finally released of the reign of Winter Soldier, you can see the relief in his eyes. And throughout the season, you can see him getting more and more happy and smiley and his old Bucky self. But at times, I felt like the producers were just like oh yeah Bucky's supposed to be in this show too and just tied up his storyline at the end I mean we see him in the first episode in therapy with a notebook of names of people he wants to amend then we see him in Wakanda with this winter soldier gone and the final episode we see the notebook with all the names crossed out so it does come full circle his storyline does all tie together but then I guess because he's more of a main focus in the Captain America films than Sam this show was more of a focus on Sam and his best scene was probably when he didn't shoot Zemo and handed him over to the Dora Milaje. Instead, we see that the Winter Soldier is fully gone out of his system. And this means that Zemo might come back again. Woo! And with most people we love Zemo in this show, his dancing will be added to the long list of iconic Marvel scenes, but I feel like if you take his character out, it wouldn't change that much. I mean, if Sam and Bucky actually fought for longer than a second, they would have been able to track down Carly, or maybe even with the help of Torres. Torres is a new character, one of Sam's army buddies, and he was the one that actually put the flag smashers on Sam's radar and tracked them down in New York, so he could have just done it instead of Zemo, and apparently in the comics he's supposed to become the next, the Falcon, so we might see him again in the MCU. Now I want to talk about two people who I just want to put a big question mark over Carly the show's villain I don't really know who the villain was whether it's supposed to be her or John Walker I guess they both are in a way and she's played by Erin Kellyman who does a great job but Kai says some questionable things like Bucky never fought for something that was bigger than him as if World War II and Thanos wasn't a thing. She also said that Lamar's life didn't matter and I don't know if we were supposed to take it in that way but given the show's main theme I think we were. That aside Carly's storyline and the Flag Smasher storyline in general just seemed underdeveloped Though it didn't seem like there was this big threat by the finale and everything just felt underwhelming. The end to Carly and the Flag Smashers felt uneventful but yes I understand that Carly's death led to Sam's big speech and she rallied all these people so obviously it meant something like but we knew all of Carly's reasons, we knew where she was coming from but the stakes weren't that high, we didn't know how far she was willing to go, we need some more of the big stuff, and speaking of the big stuff, Sharon Carr as the power broker, that was crazy stuff wasn't it? This notorious big guy who Zemo was afraid of turned out to be a little innocent Sharon Carr who's far from innocent now, she means business, but they hinted at her being the power broker far too much so the big reveal felt like nothing because we knew it, we knew she was the power broker. And I'm just really annoyed that she's going to be this villain type thing. I mean, she could have been the next Peggy Carter to Sam and Bucky, but any story arc she had before this is completely thrown out and replaced with the big question, why is she a villain now? I understand that she's pissed that they all forgot about her in Civil War and she's been on the run since, but she's Agent 13 again. She's back at S.H.I.E.L.D. She could have got her old life back, but instead she's selling governmental secrets and Peggy Carter is just rolling in her grave. Soul. The women in this show really let me down, but not Sarah. Sarah's still golden and, well, the Dora Milaje, of course. And now the man of the hour, the guy who makes the show what it is, John Walker. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually liked his character. I mean, they really had us going in the first five and a half episodes, not gonna lie, but he was a guy we all loved to hate. From the very first episode where they show him holding the shield, honestly, it was the wink for me. I really did not like that. And I didn't like his interactions with Sam and Bucky. Sometimes he seemed like a genuine guy, but other times he just seemed really up himself. He barged in on Sam when Sam was talking to Carly, even though he was doing fine and handling the situation. He even tried disrespecting the Dora Milaje. No one disrespects them. And luckily they kicked his ass. But after he takes the serum and after his friend Lamar dies, he goes from bad to worse. Understandably, his best friend just got murdered. He ends up killing the flag smash who he thinks killed his friend who didn't with Cap's shield, an emblem of like good. And honestly, 
this isn't good, he's supposed to be a good guy and he's done that. And the next episode starts with him having a mental breakdown over it all and you do kind of feel sorry for him but he doesn't agree to give up the shield so they have to end up breaking his arm to get it back. He even goes as far as to make his own budget shield which doesn't last very long. But the thing that flicks the switch on all of this John Walker hate is the team up with Sam and Bucky, the tree we didn't know he needed. He came to that fight fully prepared to hurt or even kill Carly and the Flag Smashers but he dropped all of that and had a full on Simba remember who you are moment when he tried to help and save the Senate. I'm not who I used to be. But then the sketchy woman Valentina shows up again and he becomes the US agent who I believe is a bad guy, an anti-hero, which kind of backtracks his redemption so I don't really know what that was about but Wyatt Russell was really good playing John Walker great actor for a great character, a guy we love to hate. And I just want to say that I really like the credits in the last episode where they changed the title card from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier to Captain America and the Winter Soldier. That was a really nice touch. And Captain America 4 is confirmed and I can't wait for Anthony Mackie's film debut as Captain America. Overall, I did really like this show. There were a lot of things that worked, some things that didn't, and obviously they were filming during a pandemic so some things were cut. That could explain some iffy storylines. It felt like your typical Marvel film just with a less catastrophic threat. It was a good way to introduce Sam as Captain America and give Bucky a little peace of mind. So those are my thoughts on Disney Plus's The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, sorry, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. And if you liked this review, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Bye!